name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'm going to speak on this first Sunday of Great Lent on the sacrifice of Abraham's son Isaac on Mount Moriah. As we all know, as a family here at St. Luke, we're focusing on the theme of the resurrection in the Old Testament. We're learning that there are many stories in the Old Testament that are already prefiguring the passions, the suffering, the death, and the resurrection, the exaltation of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And because the church as a whole during these holy 40 days learns from the Old Testament, we return to the Old Testament history, to its teaching, to its witness, to its prophetic oracle, so to speak, we're going to focus on this one theme so that by the time we get to Holy Saturday, when we sum this all up so very beautifully in this Holy Saturday liturgy, we will understand or have a deeper appreciation of the connection between what happens in the Old Testament regarding the prophecies and the oracles concerning the coming of the Messiah and his death and resurrection. And what the church teaches us about this story of Abraham and Isaac on Mount Moriah is that it is a very clear picture, so to speak, of something that was to take place in the future on another mountain that we call Golgotha. Matter of fact, St. John Chrysostom, he loves to preach on this story of Abraham and Isaac and their sacrifice and his sacrifice. Because what John Chrysostom says is that what God did not require Abraham to do on that mountain, to give up his one and only son, he himself did for us men and for our salvation so that we could be delivered from the triple tyranny of sin, death, and devil. And this is a beautiful parallel. So Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac is what we call spiritually a type, a typos, a type of this resurrection which was to come. And if we look at this beautiful story, and we contemplate it in the way that we should, we learn a number of really vital things about our Lenten journey. Number one, that we return, first of all, to this understanding that we ourselves are incapable of working our own salvation, that we have to wait for the Lord to act. This was Abraham's last test. Abraham was tested ten times in his life. And this test of offering up Isaac was the last one. The last one. And how long, does anybody remember how many years Abraham waited for this blessing of a son? Many years. I don't even remember. I, I'm getting old, so I don't quite, I don't quite remember all the, of these biblical details. But he waited a long time, and then it was only when he was an old man, I think he was 94 or 96, that God gave him this long-awaited son. But what kind of father could he be at the age of 96, indeed? And so it was kind of a strange gift, at least from a worldly point of view. But Abraham waited for the Lord to act. And he learned a lesson. Because if we return back to the story of Abraham and his wife, Sarah, she says, let's take care of this problem ourselves. Right? And so Abraham decided that he didn't have a son. The Lord was taking too long. And so what does he do? He takes up with another woman and she gives him a son, and what happens to his family? It's all grief. It's all a catastrophe. And this is really what we need to learn from Abraham, that we have to wait for God to act in the right way, and that there are some problems and obstacles in our life that we cannot fix. As a matter of fact, I know from my own experience, that the more I've tried to fix many of these problems that are actually self-caused, right? We produce, we produce most of our own problems. The more we try to fix these things ourselves, what happens? The worse the problems get. We just dig ourselves 
deeper and deeper and deeper into the hole. And so we have to wait for the Lord to act and to save us in the way that He knows how. Secondly, another lesson very important is that Abraham learned obedience. He learned obedience. Adam and Eve were cast out from the paradise because of their disobedience. We believe that our Lord Jesus Christ, as the Son of God, is the new Adam. And this is one of the great teachings of St. Paul in all of his letters. That Christ is a genuine human being, God's one and only Son, yes, divine, but also uniquely and, and thoroughly human, genuinely human. But as the new Adam, he opens this way for us because he shows us how to be obedient to his Father to the point of suffering on the cross and dying for us. And Abraham here is obedient. Abraham waits all of his life for Isaac. Isaac is born. And then maybe a few, a few couple of years later, the Lord gives him this very strange message. And I was thinking to myself, again, as a counselor, if somebody came to me and said, God gave me a message and I need to go and kill my one and only son, I would probably tell them they're psychotic. Right? Mm -hmm. But this wasn't crazy. This was the real deal. This was the real thing. And what does Abraham do? He does not negotiate. He doesn't say to the Lord, really, you gave me this child, and now you want me to go and offer him up as a sacrifice, as a human sacrifice? Really, what kind of God are you? Right? Abraham doesn't do this. We would all do this probably, right? Mm -hmm immediately, right? Immediately, without any negotiation, renegotiation, he simply does it. And I think he did it without his wife's knowing it. Because she would probably have put up, you know, um, she would have had a fit, of course. So he takes his son and he's obedient in this sacrifice. And the more that we learn obedience, obedience has sacrifice, right? We sacrifice to God our will to self and our self-will, the more we do this, the more we will understand what it means to give to God something that we cherish very much, and then we receive it back in the right way, and it becomes something that is life-giving to us, something that is saving. And finally, one more lesson, and this is probably the most poignant lesson of this story for us as well, that we are often called to surrender up to God the things that we cherish the most. The things that we love the most, we are called to give up, to surrender up to God. And what happens in this story is that for Abraham, Isaac was already dead, right? Abraham was dead to his son Isaac in his fatherly relationship. He had already made that decision. But because the Lord stayed his hand with the knife, on that mountain, God gave him his son back to him, right? And this is what we're learning. This is what we're learning about the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives himself up to the Father by dying, and the Father does what? Raises him up on the third day by the power of the Holy Spirit. The more we give up, the more that God gives us back our life, in the way that it should be. And conversely, we also know as Orthodox that the more that we hold on uh, to these things, the more that we grasp these things for ourselves, the more that they become idols and the more that they simply destroy us. C.S. Lewis, in this wonderful book on the four loves, he says that the problem, for example, that we have with many of our families, we love our families, we love our children, we love our grandchildren, sometimes we love even our teenagers. But, right? but what C.S. Lewis says is that sometimes we love these people in our families too much. We love them too much. And we need to understand what it means to love the Lord first. Right? The Lord is the one who receives the totality of our hearts. And we might even say that there's a little bit sometimes of this spiritual codependency in all of us. And what this means is that we look to these human relationships, our families and our friends, our fathers, our spouses, 
Um, we look to these human relationships expecting them to do only what God can do for us. And this is what Abraham is learning. To love God, to be loved by God, and from that love, knowing, sharing God's love, we can then learn how to love each other. And here are the two words, in good measure, in good measure, with the right balance. And without this, our earthly loss become idolatrous, and they also become something that can be damaging to, to our faith. And so this morning, we contemplate this great man, Abraham. Abraham, he started a new way for the human race, right? He develops for us in this way uh, a knowledge of God that we have received from Him. And by following in His example, especially by waiting for God to do His work in our lives, um, and especially through obedience, and most importantly, by surrendering everything up to God so that we can receive it back to Him, then we are on our way as he was already. We are on our way in our journey towards the Pascha, the saving resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is where we ultimately learn that the only thing that matters in this life, as our Lord himself says, the one thing needful is to know the love of God and to share that love in good measure with everyone that we meet and with everybody that we live with in our own daily lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in us.